Hello and welcome. This is Ryan speaking, and today, Philip and I will be presenting recent research in eliminating human HIV-1 infection using two emerging genetic technologies, laser art and CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. During infection, HIV binds to and injects its cone-shaped core into cells of the human immune system. Next, the virus uses reverse transcriptase to copy its RNA genome into double-stranded DNA molecules in the cytoplasm of the host cell. The double helixes then travel to the nucleus, where another enzyme, integrase, inserts them into a host chromosome. The events of this portion of the life cycle make HIV a retrovirus, an RNA virus that, after infecting a host cell, copies its single strands of RNA into double helixes of DNA that can be integrated into the host chromosome. Reverse transcription, the foundation of the retroviral life cycle, is thus inconsistent with the central dogma of molecular biology, the one-way flow of genetic information from DNA to RNA to protein. Once integrated into a host cell chromosome, the viral genome can do one of several things. One, shown in this diagram, it directs the host cell's protein synthesis machinery to make hundreds of new viral particles that butt off from the parent cell, taking with them part of the cell membrane. This process can result in the host cell's death. Two, HIV can overutilize the host cell's translational machinery, exhausting its energy supply and triggering cell death, known as apoptosis. Three, the HIV genome can lie latent inside the host chromosome, where the integrated viral genome is copied and transmitted to a pair of new cells with each mitotic cell division. In addition to its inconsistency with the central dogma, Reverse transcriptase has another feature not seen in most DNA polymerases, inaccuracy. With their 3' to 5' exonuclease proofreading activity, normal DNA polymerases replicate DNA with an error rate of one mistake per million nucleotides copied. Reverse transcriptase, however, introduces one mutation in every 5,000 incorporated nucleotides. HIV uses this high capacity for mutation to gain a tactical advantage over the immune response in humans. Cells of the immune system seek to overcome an HIV invasion by multiplying in response to the proliferating viral particles. In every patient, each day of infection results in 100 million to a billion HIV particles being released from infected immune system cells, which are CD4 white blood cells, a type of helper T cell. Nonetheless, as long as the immune system is strong enough to withstand the assault, it responds by producing as many as 2 billion new cells daily. Many of these new immune system cells produce antibodies targeted against proteins on the surface of the virus. But just when an immune response wipes out those viral particles carrying the targeted protein, virions with mutated proteins resistant to the current immune response make their appearance. After many months or years of this complex chase, capture, and destruction by the immune system, the changeable virus outruns the host's immune response and gains the upper hand. The mutability of HIV has guided two potential therapeutic approaches toward the control of AIDS, drugs and vaccines. Some of the antiviral drugs approved in the United States for treatment of HIV infection block viral replication by interfering with the action of reverse transcriptase. Each drug is similar to one of the four nucleotides, and when reverse transcriptase incorporates one of the drug molecules rather than a genuine nucleotide into a growing DNA polymer, the enzyme cannot extend the chain any further. However, the drugs are toxic at high doses and thus can be administered only at low doses, failing to destroy all virions. Because of this limitation and the virus's high rate of mutation, mutant reverse transcriptases soon appear that work even in the presence of the drugs. Similarly, researchers are having trouble developing effective vaccines. Even if a vaccine could generate a massive immune response against one, two, or even several HIV proteins. Such a vaccine might be effective for only a short while. That is, until enough mutations build up to make the virus resistant. For these reasons, the HIV virus will most likely not be entirely eliminated from drugs or vaccines. However, combinations of these therapeutic tools, known as antiretroviral therapy, 
has proved to be effective at prolonging and normalizing an HIV patient's life. As seen in the figure, newer drugs added to this cocktail include protease inhibitors that prevent the activity of enzymes needed to produce viral coat proteins, entry inhibitors that prevent viral entry into human cells, and inhibitors of the viral integrase protein that prevent integration of the HIV proviral DNA into the CD4 genome. While art has proven to be effective in keeping HIV dormant, it must be taken daily for life, and side effects are always a possibility. So, can we go one step further? In other words, can we permanently eliminate the presence of HIV in the bloodstream? Funded by the National Institute on Drug Abuse, research led by Dr. Khalili at Temple University and Dr. Gendelman at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, has resulted in a novel approach for eliminating HIV. Attacking HIV-1 from two directions, this approach uses two growing technologies, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing and laser art. The CRISPR-Cas9 system can be used to induce double-stranded breaks at almost any position in the genome. Essentially, it utilizes a protein as a guide to bring a DNA-cleaving enzyme to a specific genomic location creating a double-standard break at that site. The cell's innate, subsequent DNA repair of the break can then result in a point mutation with the insertion or deletion of one or a few base pairs, or the knock-in of a specific DNA sequence. The ability to flexibly alter genomes has a wide range of curing benefits. Such pinpoint genome editing, for example, has commonly allowed for gene therapy in which mutant alleles in the genomes of the somatic cells of a person suffering from a genetic disease can be changed to wild-type alleles. In addition, the technology allows for engineered changes in even two or more different genes. Such efficiencies eliminate tedious and time-consuming steps of genetic crosses to create plants or animals whose genomes contain multiple modified genes. The genetically engineered CRISPR-Cas9 system has two components. The first component is a Cas9 polypeptide, an endonuclease that can make double-stranded breaks in the DNA. It is altered so that it includes a short stretch of amino acids that constitute a nuclear localization signal, allowing the protein to be imported into the nucleus, where it can act on DNA. The second is an investigator-designed single-stranded RNA, called single-guide RNA. At the phi prime end of the single-guide RNA is a 20 base pair sequence that is complementary in sequence to a target site of interest in the genome to be altered. The three prime end of the single guide RNA binds specifically to the Cas9 protein. The single guide RNA sequence is designed to bring the Cas9 endonuclease to a specific target in the genome. In the nucleus, Cas9 single guide RNA complexes seek out and bind to their designated genomic DNA target, making a double stranded break. The generation of this break in the DNA triggers the innate repair mechanisms in the cell of which there are two main pathways, non-homologous end-joining repair or homologous recombination. Repair of the break by non-homologous end-joining often results in a small insertion or deletion of a few base pairs at the break. Such a mutation can knock out the function of a gene, for example, if it corresponds to a frame shift mutation. On the other hand, if DNA molecules corresponding to the DNA flanking the break are introduced into cells at the same time as the Cas9 single guide RNA, double strand break repair by homologous recombination can incorporate that DNA into the genome at the break site, generating a knock in. Before investigating the effectiveness of CRISPR Cas9 with antiretroviral drugs, it is important to distinguish differences in laser art compared to other antiretroviral therapy approaches. Laser, long acting, slow effective release is a more effective innovation of antiretroviral therapy, ART, currently used to treat HIV-1. With enhanced lipophilicity, these drugs are packaged in fat-soluble particles, leading to a slower release over a longer period of time. This lifts the burden of administering med medications daily, allowing for a more effective and prolonged defense mechanism. Laser ART on its own is still a form of drug administration, however, meaning that the latent HIV infection still cannot be fully eradicated. Laser art utilizes the capabilities of immune cells to a better degree than traditional art. The fatty acid modified prodrugs 
that are injected into target tissues are easily absorbed by macrophages and CD4 plus T cells. Macrophages now act as drug storage sites, aiding the CD4 plus T cells to locate, mark, and destroy HIV-1 viruses. While laser art provides a slower and sustained approach to drug release, their lipophilicity also helps them move efficiently across cell and tissue borders to viral breeding grounds. Viral rebound would occur if laser art is discontinued, but occurs at a much slower rate than regular art. While CRISPR-Cas9 performs the changes on a genetic scale, laser art fortifies the immune system to suppress any significant response on a viral level. As we will discover, the success of each of these components relies on the other to lead to a favorable outcome. In application, the CRISPR-Cas9 and laser art joint therapy was utilized to experiment the in vivo elimination of HIV-1 in humanized mice or mice capable of replicating human T cells. As such, it was necessary to create humanized mice infected with HIV-1. First, mice were transplanted with hematopoietic stem cells capable of differentiating and producing CD4 T cells. To do so, the mice's immune systems were severely weakened to tolerate the human immune cells. The figure shown on the bottom left presents the PCR analysis of genomic DNA isolated from the spleens of humanized mice using the primer set specific to human and mouse beta globin. Because genes of amplified DNA complementary to the human primer can be successfully separated using gel electrophoresis, PCR analysis verifies the presence of human cells in the spleens of humanized mice. After the presence and replication of the CD4 cells were confirmed, the mice were injected with virulent HIV-1 strains. After 18 weeks, the mice were analyzed for acute and chronic infection, revealing the virus's ability to integrate into the mouse genome, utilize CD4 translational machinery to produce virulent offspring, and most importantly, undergo a high rate of mutation necessary to withstand the initial immune response. As shown in the diagram, this was evidenced by a decrease in CD4 count for HIV-infected mice over a 14-day period, revealing a sustained HIV infection. This, is, this was in stark contrast with the control, which, as expected, maintained high levels of CD4. Now that the humanized mice were infected, laser art could now be put to the test to observe its effectiveness. Common HIV-1 prodrugs, DTG, 3TC, and ABC were injected and monitored on a few levels. Data was obtained from macrophages, including drug uptake, release, and potency. Combining this data with the general pharmacokinetic profiles of each drug demonstrated the tight control over viral replication that occurred in the experimental mice. Three weeks after discontinuing laser art therapy, researchers used CRISPR gene editing to inactivate specific portions of HIV DNA remaining in T-cell genomes of the spleen, bone marrow, lymph nodes, brain, kidneys, and other tissues. Specifically, researchers utilized a knockout approach to inactivate the integrated HIV gene. As shown in the figure, Cas9 endonucleases were engineered to target the LTR1 and GAG-D target sites by producing double-stranded breaks at three locations along the HIV DNA. After directing the Cas9 endonucleases to the specific locations, the subsequent double-stranded breaks were repaired by non-homologous enjoining. Because this often results in a small insertion or deletion of a few base pairs at that break, a series of frameshift mutations result that inactivate the function of the HIV gene. With further analysis, it was also determined that no unintended gene edits of CRISPR-Cas9 were detected as a result of the frameshift mutations. In total, the researchers conducted three independent sets of experiments, with each having humanized and HIV-infected mice treated with laser art, CRISPR gene editing, and both. Researchers found that across the three experiments, 9 out of 23 mice receiving the combination treatment showed no detectable signs of HIV DNA, RNA, 
or proteins, indicating that the virus had been completely eradicated in these mice. To confirm that the seemingly virus-free mice indeed carried no more active HIV-1, the team extracted immune cells from some of these animals and transferred them into previously uninfected humanized mice. None of the recipient mice developed HIV infection. If we focus our attention to the top panel, we see how in one experiment, a total of 29 mice were infected with HIV, where 6 received no treatment, shown in red, 10 were treated with laser art only, shown in blue, 6 were treated with CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing only, shown in black, and 7 received both laser art and CRISPR-Cas9, shown in green. Levels of CD4 T cells, which again are the main target of HIV-1, were measured at different times after HIV-1 infection. Mice that received no treatment, or those that received only CRISPR-Cas9 treatment, showed declining CD4 levels. Mice that received laser art alone, or in combination with CRISPR-Cas9, maintained high CD4 levels. Evidently, the combined therapy consistently allowed for the maximum elimination of HIV presence in the mice, represented by the highest CD4 count. If we focus our attention now to the bottom panel, levels of virus particles in the blood, called the plasma viral load, were also measured in HIV-infected mice given no treatment, shown in the upper red, and mice given both laser art and CRISPR-Cas9 treatment, shown in the bottom green. Two of seven mice given the combination treatment showed no evidence of viral rebound at week 14. In the other five mice, however, virus levels increased again after the CRISPR-Cas9 treatment. Clearly, the likelihood of viral rebound exceeds that of complete elimination at this stage of testing. The birth of CRISPR-Cas9 has opened a new and seemingly infinite realm of discovery into advancing genetic technologies. The same applies on the topic of HIV-1, where integrating CRISPR-Cas9 with laser art can combat the primary and latent HIV-1 response. The thought of potentially eradicating HIV-1 from the entire pop human population seems exciting, but many issues still need to be considered before this proposition is realistic. There are still some cause for concern on the effectiveness of this treatment, as experiments with mice only reported about 40% effectiveness. One of the biggest of potential downfalls to this technology is dealing with viral mutation. Possible mutations in the viral DNA may evade, guide RNA sequences of CRISPR-Cas9. Without full er eradication of the viral DNA, the mutated strains will be able to multiply, leaving the organism in the same situation as it started. It is still unknown whether CRISPR-Cas9 will be able to be optimized to this anomaly of mutations. Other concerns raised were a lack of long-term evidence of viral rebound, as well as unknown results on organisms with normally functioning immune systems. Further research and application on mice and potentially non-human primates will need to be conducted before the possibility of human trials can even be discussed. Ethical issues could arise if this technology is prematurely introduced to human testing, especially in countries with little regulation. Initial research on this topic has looked quite promising, however, as researchers are confident that the initial utilization of CRISPR-Cas9 and laser art may be the first of many steps to combat this complex virus. As their knowledge and capabilities of CRISPR-Cas9 continue to develop over other genetic research, there is no reason why this novel treatment plan may be a beacon of hope for HIV-1 and AIDS patients in the future. Thank you for watching our presentation and we, we hope you enjoyed it.